Well, this is the drawing of a typical DCS hierarchy. DCS is the distributed control system and uh, it is an organized hierarchy of controllers that monitor and control the process in a manufacturing facility, be it a discrete manufacturing facility or process manufacturing facility. This is the system architecture and uh, a typical DCS architecture. So I will be I will be briefly explaining what are the components in this RDCS system. Well, if you look at the PLCs, we have a layer of PLCs. And the PLCs used in this case are ABB AC800M controllers. What happens in a plant? We have the plant are a process manufacturing or a discrete manufacturing facility divided into sections into different areas and each area has its dedicated plc controller in this case we have the ac 800 800m controller the valves actuators sensors machines motors induction motors all that are being operated in this specific area such as the limestone crusher in this case are interfaced with its relevant plc similarly we have another area and all the sensor actuators of uh, this raw mill area have been will be interfaced with this plc and so on and so forth so below the plc's level we have another level at the field and that is we call field level in general field level has sensors actuators induction motors and various equipments that are being operated by these plcs being operated and monitored so field level is the most basic level in a typical dcs architecture system upward from the field level we have the plcs level our control level these plcs are then networked together in the form of any network topology. In this case, we have the star topology. The network of PLCs send its data to an upper level, and this is the operator level. These are the servers that collect the data from the PLCs, right, in the form of the historian. Here we have the history server an SQL database and it stores the data stores the process data that has been coming from the sensors actuators through the PLCs and apart from saving the data the PLC program so it saves the data and we have a pair of servers operator stations server which which has the redundancy in the first place because if one server fails down the next will take the process because the operation monitoring and control of the process is very critical we do not want to stop the process so this is why we introduce a redundancy over here we have redundant servers one is primary and another is secondary we can call it like that as well so these servers act reads the data from the PLCs and writes the data into the PLCs through the graphical interfaces. The graphical interfaces are act a, or an operator is monitoring the process values through the graphical interface and apart from monitoring the process, it issues commands to the motors to the valves to the actuators to control the process according to the requirement so the graphical user interface is displayed to the operators right through these operator stations monitors every area has a specific operator for example packing plant raw material coal mill kiln and so forth these monitors has the graphical interfaces served by these servers and the graphical interfaces has all the process parameters that are coming from the field sensors through the plcs right 
So this is the brief hierarchy of a typical DCS system. Well, the engineering station has the all has the programs, has the PLC programs. We can monitor the PLCs, the, the PLC programs in this engineering workstation. We can download the PLC program from this engineering workstation to the specific PLCs. Because if we want to modify PLC program or make any modifications according to the processor requirement, we have to download the program into the PLC through this engineering workstation. Also, we can upload the program and we can read the program into these PLCs through the engineering workstation. Right? So, let me restate what I explained. In a typical DCS architecture system, we have field level instruments, which are the actual equipments that monitor and control the process. We have the PLCs level, which we also term as control level. The PLCs used in this case are ABB AC 800M controllers. Then we have the operator station server level and the operator stations client level because we cannot monitor and control the process right away from the servers, right? We provide the services to the clients and the operators are, you know, sitting uh, in front of these stations and ultimately controlling and monitoring the process. So this is the basic system architecture of a typical DCS system. If you have any question about it, you can ask me in the comment section, right? So thank you for now. See you in the next video.